Hey guys, Uncommon Ramen here with another TCG Tuesday. Last week we talked about the phases in Magic and we didn't go into great t detail about the combat phase. Uh, the combat phase is broken down into five steps and I figured I'd go into a different video to talk about the combat phase because it is uh, a little bit more complicated than most phases. If we talk about things like the untap phase, the upkeep phase, the draw phase, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Even the main phases one and two are pretty self-explanatory. Combat phase gets a little bit uh, more complicated in the sense that it's broken into several steps. Um, the very first step that you're going to see in the combat phase is the beginning of combat step. Okay, um, the beginning of combat step is similar to the upkeep phase in that it's not always going to happen. Um, the beginning, not that the step itself isn't going to happen, but there might not be abilities that trigger during that step. Um, so in this case, uh, this card says at the beginning of combat on your turn. So this would be something that would trigger during the beginning of combat step. Um, if this was not in play, then you would move into the beginning of combat step. You just would not be receiving any benefit from something like this card. Um, there are a bunch of cards like this. Just because you go into the beginning of your combat does not mean you need to declare an attack in order to take advantage of this ability. Okay, So there is always a beginning of combat step, and during that step, this ability is going to trigger. That doesn't mean that you have to then follow up by attacking your opponent. The second phase is declaring attacks. So this is where I would take creatures that I had already in play that are not affected by summoning sickness at that particular moment, and I would declare an attack against my opponent. Now this differs from some card games where you attack other creatures specifically. In Magic the Gathering, you do not attack creatures specifically. You declare an attack against your opponent, and then you declare which attackers you're using against your opponent. So in my case, my Venzer Sliver is attacking my opponent. The reason for this is because the third step in combat is the declare blocker step. This is where my opponent has an opportunity, if they have creatures in play, or they have instants in their hand to respond to what I have in play. And in this case, let's just say that they have this Grizzled Outrider and they want to choose to block with this Outrider. Okay, so they would declare, I'm blocking with Grizzled Outrider on your Venzer Sliver. So at that particular point, we move into what is called the Combat Damage Step. Okay, I've declared my attacker, which is a 3-3 Venzer Sliver. My opponent has declared their blocker, which is a 5-5 five, five, uh, Grizzled Outrider. Now, at this point, we're going to deal combat damage. So this is where we're going to take the cards, and we're going to compare what is called power and toughness. So if you look at the bottom of any creature card on the right-hand side, you're going to see a little box with numbers and a slash in it. The numbers represent the power and toughness. This has power of 3, a toughness of 3, okay? If you look at this creature, it has a power of 5, and it has a toughness of 5, okay? Power, which is the first number, is how much damage this creature deals. Toughness, which is the second number, is how much damage this creature can receive before it is killed, okay? The way you can see how much damage is being dealt is to... Put the numbers like this and compare. My power of 3 is dealing 3 damage to your toughness of 5. Your power of 5 is dealing th 5 damage to my toughness of 3. Okay. If at any point in time the amount of power is equal to or greater than the toughness of the creature, then whatever creature it is is going to die. Okay. So if you see, my sliver is dealing 3 damage to this creature's toughness of 5, which means it's left with 2 toughness, whereas it's dealing 5 damage to this creature with a toughness of 3, which means that it's doing enough damage to kill the creature. So if this was the combat that we were having, where I declared a 3-3 three, three as an attacker, and they blocked with their 5-5, five, five, then my 3-3 three, three would die, their 5-5 five, five would live. Okay, that's when we hit the end of combat step, and this is where we would simply compare the power... Well, actually, sorry, the damage dealt is where we would compare power and toughness. The um, end of combat is where we would 
take the creatures that would dealt lethal damage and we put them into our discard pile. Now, what I mentioned in an earlier video was that instants can be played at any point in time during the game. That means that an instant can be played during combat as well. Now let me clear this up. You can play instants at any point in time, which means you can play them during combat. You cannot play sorceries during combat. So if you have a sorcery in your hand, such as this right here, and ignore the snow part, the snow part is for other mechanics, but we have a sorcery right here. This sorcery says that it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. However, because it's a sorcery and we're in the middle of combat, I cannot cast this against my opponent's creature. However, if I do have an instant in my hand, I can use that. In this case, Lightning Bolt says that it deals three damage to any target, and it is instant, which means that I can play it during combat. Now, what is the benefit of doing so? Well, in this particular case, like I mentioned, I have a 3-3 and I attacked my opponent with a five, who has a 5-5, five, five, and that 5-5 five, five is blocking. Now, in the normal case of combat, if we were to just let this resolve, my sliver is going to die. However, his outrider is not going to die. His outrider has a toughness of 5. I've dealt 3 damage to that, which means he has a remaining toughness of 2. I can use on my turn as a res uh, response to combat this lightning bolt to deal three damage to this on top of the three damage that I've already dealt for a total of six damage to kill this blocker. There are a different bunch of different instants that will um, also remove creatures from combat. Uh, we have things like this that say destroy target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. Uh, we have things like this that say return target tapped creature to its owner's hand. Or things like this that just outright destroy target, in this case, non-legendary creature. Okay, These are all instant speed, which means they can be used at any point in time during combat. So if, for instance, I attacked with my 3-3 Venzer Sliver, and my opponent chose to block with, again, a 5-5 Grizzled Outrider... I can, as a uh, response in combat, use this cast down to destroy his blocker, thus removing it from combat, and my Venzer Sliver will follow through and deal 3 damage to the opponent. This is the same case if I was to use Gale Strike, which removes a tapped creature um, or returns a target tapped creature to its owner's hand. If my opponent chose not to block with the Outrider, and I'm attacking with the 3-3 Venzer Sliver, and the opponent does not want to take that kind of damage, he can use the Gale Strike as an instant to return the creature to my hand, thus removing it from combat. Therefore, it would not deal its damage. So that is how combat works. Um, those are the five steps in there. The first step being beginning of combat. If I had my Luminarch Aspirant in play, the beginning of combat would consist of at me putting a plus one, plus one counter on target creature I control. I could put that on my Venzer Sliver. I could also put that on the Luminarch Aspirant if I chose to do so. Followed by declaring an, uh, attacks. Again, you're attacking your opponent. You are not attacking a creature they control. So I would just simply tap my two creatures or however many creatures I wanted to. I don't have to use both creatures. Um, and I would say I'm attacking you. And then my opponent would declare blockers using something like this 5-5 Outrider and decide which creature he wants to block. If he has multiple creatures, he can block multiple creatures. Uh, uh, creatures that I'm attacking with. He can also use multiple creatures to block a single creature. If, let's say, I'm the one who had the 5-5 five, five Outrider, and my opponent had a Luminarch Aspirant and a Venzer Sliver, and during his combat he put a plus one, plus one counter on the Luminarch Aspirant, giving it a total of two power and two toughness, because it has one power and one toughness, and it has a plus one, plus one counter on it. And I attacked with my Grizzled Outrider. My opponent can choose to block both with the Venzer Sliver and with the Luminarch Aspirant for a total of five 
damage that it would be dealing. Um, and then I would assign my five damage any way I chose amongst the creatures that are blocking. In this case, it's an even wash. My creatures or my opponent's creatures are a three three and a two two, which is a total of five. I deal five, so I can deal three damage to the Venzer Sliver and two damage to the Luminarch Aspirant, killing them both. Um, but that is not always the case. Sometimes your opponent will block with far more toughness than you have power to uh, deal damage, and you get to choose at that point how you want to deal damage to his creatures that are blocking. Either way, my opponent has five power that it's dealing to this five toughness of this creature, therefore it would die as well. Let me see here. Um, so we talked about multiple blockers. We talked about... Uh, oh yes, I, I did forget one thing. Uh, combat damage during the combat damage step is dealt simultaneously so everything deals its damage at the exact same time there are uh, exceptions to this which i will go into in a different video but for the most part when combat damage is dealt it is dealt simultaneously to each creature so they would all die at the exact same time if uh, any creatures were dying now again the exception to this is if your opponent casts any instance during combat to either deal further damage or remove your creatures from combat. And remember, it's extremely important to understand, you cannot cast sorceries during combat. Um, let me make sure that I got everything here. Okay, so, really quickly in another video, we are going to go over keyword abilities. These keyword abilities are things like trample, vigilance, first strike, double strike, um, lifelink, death touch, uh, flying. All of these keyword abilities um, I will go into greater detail in another video. Uh, specifically core keyword abilities. Keyword abilities that are going to uh, last through from set to set. Um, you are going to see keyword abilities um, in each new set that isn't a core set, um, those keyword abilities tend to disappear when those sets cycle, so they only last for one rotation. So we're not going to go into detail about those right off the bat. I will go into detail about uh, keyword abilities outside of the core ones in another video. I'm not sure if I'll cover all of them because there are quite a bit of them, but we are going to at least cover the more popular ones. Things like proliferate or, um, I don't know, flashback, uh, um, madness, stuff like that. So that is combat explained. Uh, it's five steps, uh, pretty simple. You're going to start combat. Declare attackers, declare blockers, deal combat damage, and then resolve the combat step. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, just like any other video that I've put up uh, for this tutorial, um, toxic comments and negative comments will be removed outright. Uh, this video is meant for beginners, and I would hope that uh, everyone can remain uh, polite. Um, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I am in the process of setting up a Patreon, so if you feel inclined to support me, um, to help me bring more of this content to you, um, I would appreciate it, uh, and I will let you guys know when that Patreon is set up. And uh, until next time, guys, peace.